Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're gonna to be talking about paste wax. And I wanna actually go through what I do to make my own. So if you want to, you can buy what I make or you could make your own. So let's dive in and look at the recipe of the fun. For my wax, I use a raw natural beeswax that I actually get from a local apiary. It's a friend of mine who uh, keeps bees and uh, she shaves off all of the, uh, the, the ends of the combs and saves them for me. In this batch, we had about 20 pounds of beeswax and we need to render this down. The problem with raw beeswax is it has a lot of other things in there. It has a honey in there, it has um, bits of bees and it has junk left over from it. You just don't want that in your finished paste wax. So I'm gonna put it in a pot um, and put in with water. So about half water, about half wax and then heat it up until the wax is completely melted and homogenous. The water will absorb the sugar out of the, uh, the honey as well as allow everything to then settle. Once it is completely liquid, then I'm going to let it sit overnight and harden up. And you can see, get this puck floating on top of the uh, the honey. And so it's about a 20 pound pluck, puck. Actually, I think this one was about 12 pounds, something like that. But you can pour off the water that's underneath and then dump out the puck. Now the puck will be covered in all of this extra junk and that's what we're trying to get rid of. And so we can scrape off as much as we want and then it's basically rinse and repeat. And some people will do this three or four times. Um, I actually do it one time to get off the majority of the stuff and then the rest of it I run through a filter. So for the second set, we're going to fill it up with water again and then put that puck into the tub, heat the thing back up and melt it down. And uh, once it's melted down, then we can actually put it through some cheesecloth and that will sieve out everything else. And then we can leave it in the buckets to set and uh, separate again. So you have water on the bottom and a really nice pure puck of, um, of wax on top of it. And so I'm gonna do this through several buckets and you can see how this cheesecloth cheese cloth will get pro progressively dirtier and filled with gunk. And that is what we're removing from it. So I'll usually end up with four or five buckets worth of the wax and water. And then the next day we've got chunks of wax. I'm going to put them in a crock pot and start melting them down. We're gonna start with the hard wax. And for that, it's two parts wax to one part raw linseed oil. I have a friend who has a cold press and two, will um, press out the raw linseed oil for me and it makes it much easier for that. And this is the hard wax. I don't use the boiled linseed oil in this. I want it to stay waxier, oily or longer. And for that, we use the raw linseed oil. I have these trays that I'll pour it into to get the pucks and let that cool and harden. Then we wrap them up in wax and put that in the container with the lid down. It makes it easier to grab the puck inside. Ooh, wax. Now for the soft wax. And with the soft wax, we're gonna use the same um, beeswax, put that in, two parts beeswax. And this time we're going to use um, boiled linseed oil. And this is stuff that I've made myself. So I boil the linseed oil from the raw linseed oil. And I have a video on that if you wanna see that as well. And I will melt that down. Once it is all melted down, then I'm going to add in the mineral spirits or white spirits if you're in England. Let that all mix in and then we can pour it into trails. And that is my soft wax. Now let's talk about my Brazilian wax. Oh, you know I had to get that joke in here. <laughs> so there's how I make the waxes. Let's actually look at how exactly we use them. First, let's take a look at the soft wax. And for the soft wax, this is what has the thinner in it. And this is what I use to help finish wood. So, so after I put my finish on here, you can see I my coat my boiled linseed oil. I'm going to get a little bit of wax on, on a steel wool pad that I just keep inside here. And we're going to spread this wax on really nice and thick, rub it around, let it fill in all the pores. And really the reason for the wax is to fill in those pores and level out the surface, get a nice clean shine. After we get it worked in here, then we're just gonna make sure it's all worked in. I'm gonna let this sit for a long enough until it's getting dry to the touch. Right now it's kind of wet. I'm gonna let it dry to the touch and then we'll come back and polish it off. So after letting it dry to the touch, it's no longer tacky, we can come back in with a rag and now we can wipe off any of the excess and polish it down in. And this, all of the thinner has come out of it and we're getting, a, uh, we're getting all of the excess off and we're actually buffing and polishing it down into the surface so that we get a nice shiny glint on it. And this was what will actually polish out all of the finish. And I'll go with the grain, I'll go across the grain, 
and I'll swirl it down in, and this is what gives you that really nice polished finish. You're not going to get a gloss with it, but you're going to get this beautiful sheen that looks interesting from different angles. And so you can see how the color kind of catches the light in different ways. So my soft wax is what I will go on top of most all of my finishes, whether it's a poly or um, some other film finish, I put this on top of it. It seals the pores in and helps fill in any small imperfections and really gives you that nice sheen so you can get that, that glow you're really looking for in the wood. Um, so on top of most of my film finishes or my boiled linseed oil finishes, I put this paste wax on and so that's what I like to use. So my hard wax, this I like to keep in the lid and normally after I'm going to use it for a while, I'm going to get rid of the paper and just leave it in there for shipping. And this will keep the dust and junk off of it so that it's more protected. It makes it easier to grab and use. You see this one I've been using a bit already. And so I'm going to use this and I'm just going to go on the plane. And just like that, I have this really nice clean layer of wax. This makes the plane move incredibly smoothly across the wood. If you're working with any dense wood where it's grabbing or catching, it is incredible what this will do. Now I used to use the rag in the can and oil and things like that. Um, but I find that this wax lasts a lot longer. It has the lubrication of the oil, but the long lasting of the wax, um, it is just my favorite all around. People then ask, is this wax going to cause problems with finish on wood? And absolutely not. Um, this, it, after the first stroke or two, the wax, the visible wax is gone, but you still get the lubrication of it. And uh, it really doesn't affect the finish at all. I've never had any problem with it, even on my smoothing plane with the very last pass before finishing. Uh, that doesn't affect it at all. The other place where I use this quite a bit is for rust prevention. And I'll rub it on the surfaces, put a bit on there, come in with a rag, and just kind of polish it down into the steel. And that puts a layer of wax and oil on there that will protect this from any rust. And I, I do that quite a bit, especially if I'm going to be traveling or if it's going to be in a wood box. Um, putting a little bit of hard wax on there will protect it um, in the long term. The other place where I use it all the time is waxing saws. If you've ever been working with a saw and it's binding in the cut and it's just getting harder and harder to push, just take a couple strokes of this and wipe it down either side of the plate and it is amazing how fast this suddenly cuts. It just slides through the work. And it makes the saw work far easier. It's less you're pushing into it and more you're letting the saw do the work. So putting a little bit of wax on the saw helps it move faster as well as rust prevention and protecting the saw from any rust. And that's what I do for most of my plates to keep the rust off of the plate. So this is the block of hard wax that I've been using for almost three years. And you can see how much of it I've used in about three years. So a block this size is gonna last quite a while. Um, it's not something you need to do all the time and constantly. It actually goes through it pretty quickly. This one I left out on the bench um, and you can see how the, the top surface has dried out a good bit. You can still see the oily wax here in the middle. Um, so that's why I now keep these in a can upside down. It keeps the dust off as well as keeps it from drying out too quickly. And I can just leave this on my bench and keep it protected inside the canister. So a good hard wax does amazing things in the shop, not just for lubrication, but also for rust prevention. So there you have it. Now I do have an old video where I made paste wax before um, and I've changed what I do a little bit from time to time. Uh, as you learn things and you try new things, you come up with new mixes that you really like. Um, so if you want to see that video, I'll leave a link to that down below. But this is one of the fun things with paste wax is you can make it in whatever mixture you want, whatever recipe you want, you're still going to have something that's very functional and lots of different people like different recipes and different mixtures. So these are just the two that I use. Now if you would like to buy these, I have links to them down below and thank you for supporting the channel and helping out with that. Uh, but I want to encourage you, don't feel like you have to buy these. If you want to make your own, experiment, try something new, play around with it. Uh, it may cost a little bit more right off the bat, but uh, you get to find something that fits your style and the way you like it that's incredibly valuable. So I hope you found this video to be of value to you. Uh, and I do want to say thank you to everyone who is purchasing things on the website. You are helping keep this going. As well as I want to say thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel. Uh, without everyone supporting the channel, this channel would not exist. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's links to Patreon and you can click the join button to become a member, as well as there's links to everything that I saw on my website down below. So that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Wax on, wax off. Ooh, new channel, Karate by Right.